I saw you yesterday, and you were talking about what is happening uh, with surveillance and privacy and censorship. And I don't think people really understand how bad it is. It is does the Fourth Amendment even exist anymore? You know, Glenn, the Fourth Amendment does exist, and that's uh, like really important for people to remember, because if we treat it as if it's already gone, then no one will fight to uphold it. You know, they want, in, in a way, they want you to think the Fourth Amendment is gone. That's part of the problem. You talk to young kids today and they say, ah, so what? I don't need my privacy. I'm not doing anything wrong. And that's because they really don't understand. We've all, you know, we've been deceived by the tech industry because nobody said, yeah, take this handy little device, you know, that's going to make your life better and easier in every way and to be safer because you can call for help and so on. And now we're at the point where our phones are tracking us 24-7 and where uh, these people who own these companies own all this information about us. They own everything that we say and do literally every single thing. So a kid who thinks, well, I'm using a hidden app, right, to, to send, you know, racy pictures to my boyfriend. Well, no, the, it's, it might be hidden from your parents. It might be hidden from someone who picks up your phone, but the person who owns that app owns all those images of you, and they can do whatever they want with them. And by the way, if they're being stored on a cloud, then, you know, that, that your parent has, and you're underage, your parent is in, now in possession of child pornography. And, you, see, you know, a few years ago, nobody would have believed that that's the kind of thing the government exploits. Now imagine you were in uh, the Capitol on January 6th, and they don't have anything on you, but they want to get rid of you anyway because they don't like your politics. Well, now you can be charged with child porn because they have the ability to go through everything. And not only that, they, they have made deals with phone companies I never understood Edward Snowden fully. You know, um, I didn't understand that the programs that he exposed, like Blarney and Fairview and all these others, these were deals that the phone companies made with the NSA to physically allow them into their sites so that they could download all of our communications that go on our phones. And they were paid to do it. So the phone companies made money selling us out. So the fact that all of these people don't, um, that they violate the Fourth Amendment doesn't mean that the Fourth Amendment doesn't exist. What it means is that we're not upholding that right. And that's what we need to start doing. Okay, so for people that, um, there's two, two questions here. One, for people who don't know what the Fourth Amendment is, remind the Fourth Amendment, uh, and then I have a follow-up. So the Fourth Amendment is our right to privacy. And people think it's just about, you know, okay, I'm not doing anything wrong or I don't have any secrets. Therefore, I, you know, I don't care about my privacy. What were the origins of the Fourth Amendment? Mm. It was really the, the founding fathers knew that one of the ways that the British prevented them from organizing um, and rising up and challenging them was preventing them from meeting in private. Right. That's the, the purpose of your privacy is much more than, you know, just being out of public view. And uh, and and so th there is really nothing that's more central to our democracy than the right to privacy. I mean, all of those rights in the Constitution have a real purpose and a real value. And if we allow people to take them away from us, we're voluntarily surrendering that we're like lambs to the slaughter. Mm -hmm. You know, that's literally what we are. So the the Fourth Amendment also says that you have a right to be secure in your own papers. And that, again, comes yeah. from King George quartering soldiers in people's houses, just going in and, yeah, and just right. saying they're living with you now and you had mm -hmm. nothing to say about it. Uh, and they would go through all of your papers and they would spy on you in your own home. Uh, I yeah. have contended for a long time the Third and Fourth Amendment are being violated right now. They're not physically quartering soldiers in your home, but they certainly are in your home through all of the apps that they have back doors on. And they are going through your, quote, papers. This is well, a, a real problem. You're 100 percent right. And sort of the physical, you know, sort of example of that that I think people can grasp onto is Alexa, for example, and the other and the other systems like this. What you've done is literally give something. You've said, OK, you know, when they show up at your front door, you don't have to let them in. Right. They have to have a warrant. So in order to go into your private space 
whether it's your communications or your home, they have to have a warrant. They have to do it legally. And um, if you, you know, that's why the FISA court actually exists. When it comes to surveillance, the FISA court is the highest court in the land. Well, what are the origins of that? Well, you know, back in the 1970s, they realized that government overreach and surveillance was a real problem. So they created a surveillance court specifically to monitor this. And what if we have today? In May, the FISA court came out with, a, with an a historic report that was really a massive rebuke of the FBI and law enforcement. And what it said was that in violation of a 2018 and 2019, two different courts, two different federal judges ruled that warrantless surveillance cannot be used legally. It is inadmissible in court. Well, that happened because of what Edward Snowden revealed. It happened because of what Bill Binney, an NSA whistleblower before him, what he was warning about years before Edward Snowden. He inspired, actually, Edward Snowden. It's what all of them on the inside saw coming. Right. And put out there. So what the judges said was this this information that you're getting from the NSA has been taken. It's been gathered without a warrant. Therefore, you cannot use it because it violates the Fourth Amendment. Well, the latest report from the FISA court says, what is the FBI doing with regard to January 6th and Trump supporters? Mm. They're using the, the NSA database. Once again, they're using the uh, warrantless surveillance, which has been ruled illegal. Everybody knows it. There's no there's no hiding it. So in our one episode, we actually show Robert Mueller way back after 9-11, because I think people forget that he was the guy in charge of the FBI at the time of 9-11. And he's defending a technique that the FBI uses to hide the origins of a case in court, right? It's called parallel construction. And it's where the FBI and other agencies have gone to the NSA database, to this surveillance and this warrantless collection of information, whether it's through the internet, through the internet companies, through the phone systems, through whatever it is. And they have used that um, to uh, spy on you and to prosecute you. And they create a parallel chain of evidence. That's what it is. They, it's parallel construction to hide the origins of the case and basically to lie to the court because they know that their evidence is inadmissible. And, you know, this really comes to mind right now because you have how many Americans are sitting in prison in Washington, D.C., who have yet to be convicted of any crime and they're in solitary confinement. You know, Elizabeth Warren and other even Democrat senators have campaigned against solitary confinement. They call it the most uh, cruel form of torture yeah. and extreme punishment. And you have American citizens on American soil in solitary confinement who have never been convicted of a crime. And we are silent, Glenn. And how are they going after all of these people? What this database of surveillance allows the law enforcement to do is to go back in time through all of your communications, find things to manipulate into, uh, you know, your weaknesses or whatever, anything they want. But they can go back because everything digital lives forever. That's how we know, you know, when people are lying, when they say the emails disappeared, right? Lois Lerner, IRS, Hillary Clinton, you know they're lying because in the digital world, nothing ever goes away. So uh, talk to the people who will say, um, I don't have anything to hide. I don't think people understand. You know, I, I, was, I was in a mall the other day, and uh, this woman come, came running out of a store, and she said, oh, my gosh, you're Glenn Beck. And she had a very heavy Polish accent. And I said, yes, ma'am. And she said, I just can't thank you enough for what you say and what you're doing. She's like... I came from communism. I escaped. What is happening? And I said, I, I, people here just don't think that way. We just don't understand what a surveillance and oppressive state really means. So explain to people who say, I don't have anything to hide. I don't care. They can watch everything. Why is this a danger? It's a danger because they're not just looking at what you may have to hide. They're looking at how to manipulate you and into doing what they want. It's a, these are control systems. 
That's really who they are. And so what we're ultimately, one of the whistleblowers, uh, not whistleblowers, hackers in our piece, who was very, very, uh, if he, he was one of the most revered privacy specialists, online privacy specialists in the world before he was targeted. His name is Jacob Applebaum. And I think he's one of the most extraordinary people I've ever interviewed. And he and Julian Assange and another guy, Trevor Fitzgibbon, who was the PR arm of WikiLeaks, they were the three pillars of WikiLeaks. You know, Julian, the face of it, Jacob was really the, the software and the mind behind it, you know, the technological mind. He vetted all of the Snowden, you know, the NSA documents before that Snowden got to make sure that they were real and so on. And they were all targeted with false rape allegations and their lives destroyed, right? Mm. And Jacob is in self-imposed exile in Berlin. But this young man is uh, is really an uh, extraordinary mind. And he talked to me about the, the future of the world is where we become the monitored class, i.e. you and I and everyone else who's surveilled, mm -hmm. and those monitoring us. And those are really the only two classes in, in the future, right? All of the other stuff, left and right and communist Marxists, blah, blah, blah. None of that is actually going to matter at all because in the future, we are literally separated by those who are monitored and those who are not. Because monitoring us, it, it encourages us to self-censor, right? So what do we do? We police ourselves. Why are you going to defund the police? You don't need the police because we're going to police ourselves. And with the surveillance, we will always know who's doing what. This is, we can decide who we're going to let get away with a crime or, you know, uh, whether there's something. And we need you to do something for us. We know that you're cheating on your wife. Therefore, you're the guy that we're going to go to. Or your daughter wants to go to this particular college program. Okay. And they look back. Oh, her parents. Look, they're Christians. Oh, she's not going to this program. We don't want any Christians. You know, and, um, oh, these people are homophobic or whatever it happens to be. They, what they do with the information is they create a human terrain map for every single person on the planet. Anyone who's within a digital signature and within their reach, they are creating a, a, a human terrain map that can be used against you by anyone, can be private corporations can be the health insurance companies. You get your DNA tested at 23andMe. Well, I interviewed a guy from an HMO, one of these health management operations, right, and organizations. And he said they were buying data from 23andMe. They, that's one of those third-party users that they're selling to. So they can then determine with your DNA, the health insurance companies can decide whether or not to insure you and how much to charge you. And you, you can break that down. Well, you know, are we going to give you medical care, or cancer treatment? No, you're probably going to die. So you're going to get to the back of the line. We're going to decide who gets treated based on survivability. Or in California, a couple of years ago, they made it a law that every child that enters the education system has to be monitored the entire way through because they want to ensure, equal, you know, that they all have equal opportunity. Hmm. Well, <laughs> how easy is that to manipulate? Mm -hmm. So I think... What, what people really don't understand is that this human terrain map generates what is then called a pattern of life. So it's not just what you do and what you say. It's when you don't do those things or it's when you change your pattern of life. They're able to identify changes. So say, for example, you know, um, when I was attacked and targeted for my reporting on Benghazi, one of the things that was the subversive thing in all the, the undercurrent behind all the attacks was, was trying to destroy my marriage and break up my home. There were actually articles um, that were, you know, sort of hoping and, and celebrating this idea. And then they started to attack my husband. And they tried to suggest that, oh, my husband was, you know, some uh, evil military propagandist and that, you know, that uh, and the inference was, uh, of course, they could only infer it because it's a complete and utter lie that this is, it somehow tainted my reporting, you know. And so what are they trying to do when they go after you, when they cancel you? They don't want to, you to just lose your job. They don't want Megyn Kelly to lose um, her show. They want her never, ever, ever to get another job in mm -hmm. broadcasting ever again. Mm -hmm. When they get rid of Glenn Beck and, you know, Bill O'Reilly, and, and they don't want you to survive. They don't want you to be employed anywhere else. So they want to destroy you financially. They want to make sure that, you know, everyone, when you have financial pressure, it causes 
uh, friction, right, in homes and in marriages and, in, and difficulties in people's lives. And so you see this over and over and over again. What do they do? They want you never to be hired, right? They're going to say, look what they're doing in corporate America. Mm-hmm. They're saying if you were a Trump supporter or you went to the Capitol on January 6th, you have to be fired. If you're bank with, you're not allowed to bank with us. You're not allowed Chick Fil A. You can't open a restaurant at a gas station or you know motor stop along the way because you don't. You're you know you're a bunch of uh, uh, Christians and you don't support transgender rights. 